Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. If things go wrong, you hit a dead end, as you will. It's just life's way of saying, time to change course. So ask every failure, this is what I do. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. If you don't get the lesson, it shows up wearing another pair of pants or skirt to give you some remedial work. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper because life always whispers to you first, first. And if you ignore the whisper, sooner or later, you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists, but if you ask the right question, not why is this happening, but what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. My friend Eckhart Tolle, uh, who's written this wonderful book uh, called A New Earth, it's all about letting the awareness of who you are stimulate everything that you do. He puts it like this. He says, don't react against a bad situation. Merge with that situation instead. And the solution will arise from the challenge. Because surrendering yourself doesn't mean giving up. It means acting with responsibility. Okay. Many of you know that, as President Hennessy said, I started this school in Africa. And I founded the school where I'm trying to give South African girls a shot at a future like yours, Stanford. And I spent five years making sure that school would be as beautiful as the students. I wanted every girl to feel her worth reflected in her surroundings. So I checked every blueprint, I picked every pillow, I was looking at the ground in between the bricks. I knew every thread counted the sheets. I chose every girl from the villages, from nine provinces. And yet, last fall, I was faced with a crisis I'd never anticipated. I was told that one of the dorm matrons was suspected of sexual abuse. Well, that was, as you can imagine, devastating news. First, I cried. Actually, I sobbed for about a half an hour. And then I said, let's get to it. That's all you get, is a half an hour. You need to focus on the now, what you need to do now. So I contacted a child trauma specialist. I put together a team of investigators. I made sure the girls had counseling and support. And Gail and I got on a plane and flew to South Africa. And the whole time, I kept asking that question. What is this here to teach me? And as difficult as that experience has been, I got a lot of lessons. I understand now the mistakes I made because I had been paying attention to all of the wrong things. I built that school from the outside in when what really mattered was the inside out. So it's a lesson that applies to all of our lives as a whole. What matters most is what's inside. What matters most is the sense of integrity, of quality, and beauty. I got that lesson. And what I know is, is that the girls came away with something too. They've emerged from this more resilient and knowing that their voices have power. For other people's children, what they were not able to do for their own boy. The lesson here is clear, and that is if you're hurting, you need to help somebody else ease their hurt. If you're in pain, help somebody else's pain. And when you're in a mess, you get yourself out of the mess, helping somebody out of theirs. And in the process, you get to become a member of what I call the greatest fellowship of all, the sorority of compassion and the fraternity of service. The Stanfords have suffered the worst thing any, any mom and dad can ever endure, yet they understood that helping others is the way we help ourselves. And this wisdom is increasingly supported by scientific and sociological research. It's no longer just woo-woo soft skills talk. There's actually a helper's high a spiritual surge you gain from serving others. So if you want to feel good, you have to go out and do some good. But when you do good, I hope you strive for more than just the good feeling that service provides, because I know this for sure, that doing good actually makes you better. So whatever field you choose, if you operate from the paradigm of service, 
I know your life will have more value and you will be happy. I was always happy doing my talk show, but that happiness reached a depth of, of, um, of fulfillment, of, uh, of joy, that I really can't describe to you a measure when I stopped just being on TV and looking at TV as a job and decided to use t television, to use it and not have it use me, to use it as a platform to serve my viewers. That alone changed the trajectory of my success. So I know this, that whether you're an actor, you offer your talent in the way that most is inspires art. If you're an anatomist, you look at your, your gift as knowledge and service to healing. Having compassion for other people is at the top of that list. I would say commitment is at the top of that list. And also a spirit of constructive engagement. And by compassion, I don't just mean sympathy. It certainly isn't pity. It's being present and it's also feeling with other beings. You know, during the years of the Oprah show, I interviewed over 37,000 people one-on-one. -on -one. So whenever I'm telling my girls anything and they say, oh, they start rolling their eyes, I go, I'm the only person you're gonna talk to is talk to 37,000 people. So if I were you, I would pay attention. But during all those years of talking to over 37,000 people one-on-one, -on -one, I could feel what they were feeling so strongly. Sometimes it made me sick, literally. So I had to learn how to feel how others were feeling, feel with others, which, it, which is what it means to be compassionate, to feel with others without taking in all of their stuff. Being compassionate means I feel with you. It is one of the greatest qualities in the world to have if you're going to be uh, majoring in what it takes to be a great human being. I feel with you means I not only am willing to walk in your shoes, it means my heart beats with yours. It means I see myself in you. It means I may not have shared that circumstance, but I know what heartbreak feels like. I know what pain feels like, and all pain is the same. It means I can feel your will to want to do better and be better, and I feel and I am with you. In spite of everything that's happened to you, I feel your need to rise. I want to help you rise. I want to rise with you. If you can capture the humanity of people, if you can just capture the humanity of the people, of the stories that you're telling, you then get that much closer to your own humanity. And you can confront your bias and you can build your credibility and hone your instincts and compound your compassion. You can use your gifts, that's what you're really here to do, to illuminate the darkness in our world. So many people are worried about building a brand. I hear kids on social media talking about their brand. And I used to really resent the word when people would say to me, oh, you have this brand, because I never, never even thought about a brand. I just thought about day in and day out, making the best right choice for me. But now I embrace it because I recognize people see me as a brand. But for me, it's not a business. It is a question of what do you stand for? And I will say this, you're nothing if you're not the truth. So I have made, I've made a living, I've made a living, I've made a life, made a fortune really, it's fantastic. All good from being true to myself. And, and that's the, if I could leave you with any message today, that is it. Uh, the biggest reward is not financial benefits, though it's really good, you can get a lot of great shoes. Nothing wrong with great shoes. But those of you who have a lot of shoes know that having great shoes and a closet full of shoes or cars or houses or square footage doesn't fill up your life. But living a life of substance can. Substance through your service, your offering of your whole self. And the baseline for how do you live a life of substance is whatever is the truth what do you stand for?